Well, good evening, brothers and sisters in Christ, and Merry Christmas to everyone. <laughs> How good is it to see everyone and hear everyone on Christmas Eve again? Say amen. Amen. Yes, it is so good to be here. Um, it is so good that we are gathered here again uh, for our Christmas Eve service. So we welcome you here this evening. Um, if you are joining us in person here or online again, so we welcome you wherever you are joining us from, um, wherever you are watching us from or viewing us from. We wish you a very Merry Christmas. And uh, we have certainly been waiting, right? We've been waiting for so long. There's a lot of things we are waiting for. And that's what Advent is. Advent is waiting. It's preparing, preparing what's next. And, uh, you know, Jesus coming down to us is God's love for us. That is God's signature. That is God saying, well, I love you so much that I'm going to send your baby Jesus here. Um, so to prepare our hearts um, and just to set our hearts at worship, I would like to invite the Wirtz family at this time um, as we remember all of those um, promises that God has given to us, the joy, the peace, the love, um, and to light our Advent wreath at this time. And there are going to be responses. I invite you to uh, join in in our responses that are going to be shown on the screen. Tonight we conclude our Advent journey as we light the Christ candle, welcoming the one promised in scripture. He is called Emmanuel, God with us. We celebrate the hope brought to earth by our wonderful counselor. He is called Emmanuel, God with us. We rejoice in the strength and power of a mighty God. He is called Emmanuel, God with us. We sing of peace on earth and goodwill to all people. He is called Emmanuel, God with us and we lift our hearts in praise to an everlasting Father. He is called Emmanuel, God with us. Joy to the world, the Lord has come. Amen. So as we begin our worship, um, one thing I forgot to mention as you were coming in, if you grabbed, um, our little bulletin insert that just has what's going on in our church, um, and also a little welcome card for us to get to know you. Um, you know, given COVID restrictions right now, we're not passing out the bulletins or passing a uh, connect card, but we do have a, um, a welcome card and just get to know you card and um, anything that we can be praying about and uh, connect with you, we would love to get to know you more. So church, let's stand, let's worship our God, let's worship our Lord Jesus. One, two, three, and...
Lord, we come to adore you, a little one, a little one that's in the manger. We come and adore you on bended knee, with hopeful hearts, and eyes stretch wide with wonder and awe. The gentleness of your gaze draws us into the mystery of all that lies beyond, Lord. And in that place of falling into joy, we yield all that we are to you. And we pray to those who are broken, to those who seek, to those who are hungry, to those who are meek, the grieving spirits and the ragged lives, for those who are clinging to the last best thing and those whose hearts just pine for love. And the angel said to Mary, do not fear, for peace is here, a baby has come. So little baby brother Jesus, we adore you. We turn our faces ever toward you for peace, for mercy, for all of the sake that's holy and good. Jesus, we come to adore you, O Christ, and we love you. Amen. Church, you may be seated. Merry Christmas, everyone. We're so grateful to uh, Sarah and our worship team for leading us in, in worship this evening. And so grateful for your presence here, whether you're with us here in person tonight. It is just so good uh, to see everyone or those of you joining us uh, via the live stream as well. It's good to come together and celebrate uh, the birth of our Lord Jesus. Uh, if you've been here in the past for uh, our first service, uh, you might remember that often uh, I would sit up there in a big chair and the children would gather around. And we just thought that uh, this year, uh, given our circumstances, that we would do things a little differently. But we're hoping that all the children that are here this evening will participate with me in the telling of our story. Now, before we get into that, uh, we have a brief video that we'd like you to see. So let's just Take a look at this. It wouldn't be Christmas without. Uh, family. It wouldn't be Christmas without. Christmas carols. Not be Christmas without. No. It wouldn't be Christmas without a Christmas tree. Wouldn't be Christmas without what? Jesus' birthday cake. Don't forget the advent calendar. It wouldn't be Christmas without my mommy and daddy. It wouldn't be Christmas without... Presents. <laughs> it wouldn't be Christmas without... All right, that was great. So we've been in this uh, series through this season. It wouldn't be Christmas without, and I'm so glad to get some new ideas uh, from our kids there this evening. And tonight, our focus, of course, is it wouldn't be Christmas without Jesus. And around uh, the birth of Jesus, there was a whole cast of characters. Some of them were people, some of them were animals. And uh, on the way in this evening, our children picked up uh, some head gear uh, that hopefully all of you have gotten. If there's anyone that didn't get their head gear, if you just raise your hand and one of our, one of our youth will bring it around. Uh, obviously mine is an angel, right? Um, Although I noticed on the screen, I have another halo back here as well. Uh, so I, I want to practice this evening a little bit before we get into the story. So uh, where are our angels, our angels that are here? Yes, uh, there we go. Okay. Uh, so the angels say together, fear not. Ready, angels? Here we go. One, two, three. Fear not. I almost heard that. Fear not. Uh, we have shepherds with beards. The shepherds have beards. Any shepherds here? 
Well, some of you will have to pretend to be shepherds, right? If you have a beard tonight or you have a shepherd's beard, say, wow. wow. Hey, very good. Lots of beards. <laughs> Woo, very good. Okay. Um, now we also have some sheep. Where are our sheep? Yes, we have some sheep. All the sheep say, bah. bah. Hey, that was great. Very good. Uh, and then we also have some donkeys. Actually, I was thinking about getting some donkey ears for myself. The donkeys, where are the donkeys? Yeah, there's a donkey. There's some donkeys. The donkeys say, hee-haw. Well, we better say that again. You ready? The donkeys say, hee-haw. Hey, that was good. And then, of course, we have cows, right? Any cows here? Yes. And uh, the cows say, moo, moo. Very good. Yes. And uh, then we also have some wise men. Wise men are the ones, or magi. <laughs> Very good. Okay, one more. We have stars. Any stars out there? <laughs> so the stars say, shine bright. Hey, we heard some stars. Very good. Okay, so as we read this story together, I'm going to invite you to participate. Uh, when your part comes up, I'll let you know, and, and you can chime in. And please, others, even if you're not wearing any headgear, you're welcome to join in as you feel uh, led to do so. So let's, uh, let's hear this wonderful story. Uh, Twas the evening of Christmas. Twas the evening of Christmas. Twas the evening of Christmas when all through the town every inn was so crowded no room could be found. Tired Mary and Joseph who went door to door at last found a place on a small stable floor. And there's one character that's playing a big role with Mary and Joseph as they make the long journey, and that's the donkeys. Let the donkeys say, hee-haw. Hee Very good. Very good. Thank goodness, said Mary, who tiptoed inside. The mice saw the donkey and scurried to hide. The rest of the creatures all cuddled up tight, in hopes that they might have a calm, peaceful night. So we had the donkey again, the donkeys. Hee-haw! And then there were also some sheep there. Where are the sheep? Bah! Very good. The pigeons were nestled. Sorry, we don't have any pigeons. All snug in their beds, while visions of breadcrumbs danced round in their heads. The cows closed their eyes and the oxen laid down. The doves cooed gently. The lambs made no sound. So the cows were there. Where are the cows? And also there were some sheep there. Where are the sheep? Bah. Yes. The moon through the trees was just starting to glow with a glimmer of light on the stable below when quite by surprise came a newborn babe's cry that woke all the animals sleeping nearby. Let's hear all the animals. <laughs> Always wanted to celebrate Christmas Eve in a barn. That was great. That was great. Up jumped the cows and the oxen and sheep. Up popped the pigeons around Aroused from their sleep, they all came to gaze at the small baby boy, and his mama and papa hugged him with joy. Now donkeys, now cows, now pigeons and sheep, now oxen and mice in the manger did peep. His eyes, how they twinkled, his dimples so sweet, as they nuzzled his fingers and cute little feet." Let's hear all the animals, a song of praise for the baby Jesus. <laughs> wow, that's great. Oh, that's great. Wonderful. I think we may have the makings of an animal choir here tonight. And out in the fields, taking care of their sheep, 
Some shepherds were just getting ready to sleep when all of a the sudden they had such a fright as a whole chorus of angels lit up the night. So how about our stars? Shine bright, shine bright. A few stars, yes. And how about our angels? The angels say, fear not. And then, of course, the shepherds, the shepherds go, wow. <laughs> so the stars shine bright and the angels fear not and the shepherds, wow, wow. But the song of the angels, the words that they said, soon let the men know they, were, they had nothing to dread Dear shepherds, it's wonderful news that we bring. A Savior is born. He is Jesus, the King. So the angel said, fear not. And the shepherds said, wow. And the sheep said, bah. They ran to the stable and peeked through the door and saw something never imagined before, there in the manger, a baby boy lay, no blankets, no pillow, his bed made of hay. And the shepherd said quietly, wow, try that again, wow, wow. And so that small stable came and to that small stable came three splendid kings with gifts for the baby, all beautiful things. They jumped from their camels and knelt at his feet with their frankincense, gold, and myrrh that smelled sweet. How about our wise men and wise women who say, adore him. Adore him. Let's say that a little louder. Adore him. <laughs> Adore him. Yes. The stable was filled with a wonderful light as stars above Bethlehem twinkled so bright and high in the heavens God whispered, my son, you'll bring hope to the world and love everyone. And the star said, shine bright, shine bright. Then back to their slumbers, the animals curled, amazed at this babe who had entered their world. As Mary and Joseph got ready for bed, they snuggled their baby and kissed his sweet head. So the sheep were there, the cows were there, Moo. The donkeys were there. And I think the shepherds went back to their fields. <laughs> wow. Very good. And the magi, they went on their way as well. Adore him, right? As Mary laid Jesus asleep in the hay, she thought about all that had happened that day. The mice heard her whisper, as she tucked him in tight. Merry Christmas, my son, and to all a good night. Now let's everyone, every animal, every character in another song of praise to the newborn king. You ready? One, two, three. <laughs> Amen. Well, that was great. That was great. So uh, a little different reading of the, of the Christmas story uh, this evening. And yet, how wonderful to know that the baby born in Bethlehem long ago was born for all of us. And that's what I want to talk about for a few minutes uh, here this evening as we think about it. It wouldn't be Christmas without Jesus. I don't know if any of you have ever seen this show on television. It's called Dirty Jobs. Anybody ever see that? The show ran for like eight 
seasons, right? And uh, you can still catch the reruns, I think, on the Discovery Channel. And in each episode, the host, Mike Rowe, uh, goes on site with men and women who have the dirtiest, the smelliest, and the most disgusting jobs. These people do things that most of us have never heard of and do things that most of us would never imagine ever wanting to do. In one episode, Mike goes on site with a sewer inspector. And in addition to what you might expect to find, during a sewer inspection, they encountered roaches and rats and snakes and all kinds of other terrible stuff. And Mike has also worked on a farm where they raise worms. He's worked in a facility where they clean fish, in a factory where they make charcoal. Those are just some of the cleaner jobs that Mike visits on, uh, on this show. Now, I think that if the show Dirty Jobs had been around back in the time of Jesus, that Mike would have interviewed the shepherds and maybe all those other characters this evening. The shepherds in Jesus' time worked around the clock in very rough conditions. Just think about it. No plumbing, no electricity, no hot showers, no laundry, no detergent, which probably added to no social life for the shepherds. Those who first read the Christmas story would have been shocked that the good news of Jesus' birth was first announced to the shepherds with all those animals. Sure, there were lots of shepherds in Israel's history before he went back to Egypt to lead the Israelites out of slavery. We read that Moses was a shepherd and while he was watching the flocks of his father-in-law, God appeared to him out of a burning bush. And we remember David, who was a shepherd out in the fields watching the flocks of his family. He also wrote our favorite psalm, the Lord is my shepherd. And some of the great prophets of the Old Testament were shepherds. They foretold that the Messiah would come and be a shepherd to God's people. Shepherds had such a prominent place in the Bible story, but in the first century Palestine, shepherds were very low on the social ladder, and it wasn't just because of their hygiene. They were known to do things like let sheep graze in land that didn't belong to them and then lie about it. Shepherds had a bad reputation, and yet God chooses them. God chooses shepherds to be among the first to hear the good news, the greatest news that this planet has ever heard, the birth of Jesus. One of the things that I love about Christmas is how God sends his angels to unlikely people in unlikely places. Instead of sending his angels to a palace, or an influential city center with well-heeled, well-educated, well-respected people. God sends his angels to a bunch of hard-working shepherds who are working in the fields. And I'm thinking that the shepherds, they must have been more surprised than anyone else that God chose them. Now, I think that this evening... Jesus wants to surprise us too, even as God surprised the shepherds long ago. What Jesus brought to the shepherds, he also wants to bring to you and me this Christmas. Jesus wants to come into our ordinary lives with an extraordinary gift. Maybe you remember how the angel declared to the shepherds and to us, behold, I bring you good news of great joy, joy beyond words, mega joy. Jesus' birth brings joy to you, joy to me, joy to the world. 
Now, it's interesting that the New Testament word for joy is very closely related to the New Testament word for grace. Charon is joy and charis is grace. And this means the joy the angels announced is really best translated joy because of grace. That joy doesn't come to us from having all of our circumstances just the way they are. Maybe we think, well, I'd have joy if I had plenty of money or a perfect family or if my health was just right. But circumstances are not the source of this great joy. Joy springs as a gift to us through the grace of God in Jesus Christ. It's offered as a gift that's unearned, unmerited, unconditional. God's love for you and for me. C.S. Lewis, who wrote the Chronicles of Narnia, describes the moment when he said yes to Jesus. And he says in that moment, the thing that surprised him the most was the joy that he suddenly felt. And Jesus wants to surprise you with joy this Christmas. Jesus mentions joy several times in his life and ministry. He says at one point to his disciples that I've said everything that I've said to you. Why? So that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. And when we're with Jesus, when we abide with the newborn king whose birth we celebrate tonight, we find this joy, this contentment, this inner peace overflowing. Tonight we celebrate this joy coming into the world in the birth of Jesus. And Luke tells us that after the shepherds go to Bethlehem, and they find Mary and Joseph and the child lying in a manger. They go back to work. But I have to tell you something. They're different. Luke tells us that these shepherds went back to their flocks along with the animals, glorifying and praising God for all that they had heard and seen. In other words, they're experiencing a joy that has changed their lives. Great joy to all the people. A pastor of a small congregation was delighted that this year his preschool age son was old enough to be in the Christmas play. And he asked his son, because pastor's kids get the first dibs on these things, he asked his son, Do you want to be Joseph? and insulted his preschool son said, no, I'm Caleb. And the pastor said, well, do you want to be a wise man? And again, his son said, no, I want to be Caleb. And so in the Christmas play, there was an extra character along with Mary and Joseph, the angels, the shepherds, the wise men, all those animals, there was Caleb. And the good news I invite you to hear this Christmas Eve is that you and I, you can come to the manger just as you are. You're invited to come and worship Jesus. Now, someone might be feeling fearful or forgotten like the shepherds long ago, maybe feeling like you're not good enough, to be included. And somebody might be discouraged or losing hope. But hear the good news. The good news that came to the shepherds long ago. Unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior. He is Christ the Lord. The good news of great joy for all the people, for you and for me. I invite you this evening as uh, we sing this next song to open your heart 
to open your heart to the holy child of Bethlehem who would come to us this evening and make all things new and give us this great, this overwhelming joy. Will you please stand as you're able as we sing this next Christmas carol? As we prepare to close our service this evening, uh, I just want to thank you again for being here to celebrate our Savior's birth uh, together uh, at First Church and pray that uh, this Christmas season will be a most special time for you to grow, grow close uh, to the Lord Jesus and also to the loved ones that uh, he brings into your lives. We're going to prepare now to close our service with our candle lighting.
how wonderful it is to be together to light candles here in the sanctuary this evening. Uh, if you're with us worshiping from somewhere else, we invite you also to find a light and to join us in our time together. I'm going to ask if those who are assisting in the lighting this evening would, uh, would come forward at this time. And uh, also, just to give you a little uh, word of instruction, that if you're receiving uh, the light, um, would you uh, turn your empty candle to the candle that will be held uh, upright by the person who comes to light the candle for you? So let's uh, be open to the presence of Christ who's here with us as we join now in the lighting of candles. Would the ushers please come?
know, I think we should sing that last verse again. Ready? Here we go. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. Those who follow me will not walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. And Jesus also said, you are the light of the world, a city set on a hill that cannot be hid. So let your light shine that others might see your good works and give glory to God the Father. As we go forth from this service tonight, we celebrate the gift of God's light to us in Jesus Christ the Lord, who offers to us and to our whole world great, overwhelming joy. Let's sing together. Joy to the world.